Hello, in this video we are going to talk about how to analyze an EPG. Before going to analysis proper, let us know what are the disorders which we can diagnose on EPG. The spectrum of disorders would be metabolic disorders and respiratory disorders. Now both metabolic as well as respiratory, it has two components, either it is acidosis alkalosis similarly in respiratory it is acidosis and alkalosis now what what this means is that what our normal blood ph is 7.35 to 7.45 the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood that is arterial carbon dioxide is 35 to 45 millimeters of hg and that of oxygen is 80 to 120 and that of bicarbonate is 20 to 28 if the ph is below this that is below 3.75 it is acidosis and if it is about 3.7 uh, 3.45 then uh, about 7.45 then it is alkalosis so what type of alkalosis or what type of acidosis will depend upon two factors see. those are bicarbonate as well as pco2 so for all practical purposes what we consider as normal ph is 7.40 okay normal pco2 what we consider is 40 okay normal uh, bicarb which we consider is 25 so if anything uh, if the ph is below 7.40 it is acidosis above 7.40 is alkalosis for practical purposes pco2 below 40 is as um, alkalosis above 40 is acidosis and bicarbs below 25 is acidosis and above 25 is alkalosis so disorders as i said are metabolic and respiratory So, in metabolic, metabolic is due to metabolic acid. Metabolic acid uh, is bicarb. Okay, respiratory is dependent upon carbon dioxide. So there are two things here. When bicarb reduces, it causes acidosis. So this is important point to remember. When bicarb reduces, it causes acidosis. When bicarb increases, it causes alkalosis. So bicarb causes only metabolic disorder. So by decrease in bicarb will cause metabolic acidosis. Increase in bicarb will cause metabolic alkalosis. Similarly, PCO2 increase in PCO2 will cause acidosis. And decrease in PCO2 will cause alkalosis. Okay. So once um, we know what all the disease, now let us know what are the causes for this. So first coming to metabolic acidosis. So in metabolic acidosis, there are two types. One is normal anion gap, metabolic acidosis. And one is high anion gap, metabolic acidosis. High anion gap, metabolic acidosis. So causes for high anion gap, metabolic acidosis, we can remember by mnemonic mud piles. Here M stands for methanol, U stands for uremia, T stands for diabetic ketoacidosis, P stands for paraldehyde, I stands for INH intoxication, L stands for lactic acidosis, E stands for ethylene glycol poisoning and it stands for salicylate so the mnemonic for high anion gap metabolic acidosis is mud pulsitis methanol uremia diabetic ketoacidosis paraldehyde inh intoxication lactic acidosis ethylene glycol and salicylate now coming to normal anion gap metabolic acidosis normal anion gap metabolic acidosis means that the anion gap is normal anion gap normal is 10 to 
10 to 14 is considered normal for calculation purpose it is cons uh, for calculation purpose it is considered 10 as normal plus or minus 4 which can be added to it so normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is of two type one is where there is gi cause one that where there is renal cause renal cause is renal tubular acidosis all type of renal tubular acidosis type 1 type 2 and type 4 all are mm, normal anion gap other is acute kidney injury caused by ACE inhibitor or ARB I'm going to GI causes GI cause for normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is diarrhea and GI bypass surgery So these are causes of uh, metabolic acidosis. Now, what is anion gap? Anion gap is uh, calculated sodium minus chloride plus bicarb. So, what happens in normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is if if bicarb uh, reduces chloride increases as a result the anion gap remains normal so normal anion gap is 10 plus or minus 4 okay so now when there is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis normal how to differentiate between this renal cause and um, gi cause so you have to calculate something called as urinary anion gap which is equal to urinary sodium plus urinary potassium minus urinary chloride if the value is negative just remember name gut so gut that is gi cause will cause urinary anion gap negative okay and positive means renal cause this is about uh, normal anion gap metabolic uh, acidosis now if it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis uh, there are so many causes that is mud piles which i labeled here so how to differentiate between them is that most causes if you see methanol peraldehyde inh intoxication ethylene glycol these four causes are basically due to intoxication so whenever there is intoxication you get something called as osmolar gap osmolar gap is measured osmolality this is you measured in serum minus calculated osmolality this calculated osmolality is calculated by 2 times sodium plus BUN by 2.8 plus glucose by 18 so you get calculated and you measure serum osmolar if there is osmolar gap now normally osmolar gap is less than 10 if it is more than 10 if there is presence of osmolar gap in indicates intoxication intoxication as a cause of metabolic acidosis so directly we can rule out one, um, these four causes by just calculating osmolar gap so directly we can arrive at the diagnosis once we establish that there is high anion gap metabolic acidosis now coming to um, causes of metabolic alkalosis so mnemonic for this is uh, alkali so, where A stands for aldosterone excess that is hyperaldosteronism okay, L stands for loop diuretics K stands for a Kali in injection that is alkali injection This could be either baking soda or milk antacids. A stands for anticoagulant, that is citrate anticoagulant. S stands for loss of fluids. 
loss of fluids is from gi or renal and i stands for increased bicarbonate administration given for metabolic acidosis so the mnemonic for causes of metabolic alkalosis are uh, alkali that is aldosterone excess loop diuretic alkali ingestion uh, citrate anticoagulant ingestion loss of um, fluids from gi tract or renal or increased bicarbonate administration now next coming to um, causes for respiratory acidosis respiratory acidosis the mnemonic for this is depressed copd so here d stands for drugs that is opioids and sedatives e stands for edema that is pulmonary edema p stands for pneumonia R stands for respiratory center st stroke. E stands for embolism of pulmonary artery. S stands for spasm of bronchus. It is an asthma. So these are causes of respiratory acidosis along with COPD. So causes for respiratory alkalosis there is no mnemonic for this causes are fever aspirin toxicity mechanical ventilation hyperventilation and hysteria now when we know the causes of um, all the metabolic disorders now let us uh, see how to approach an ebg so whenever you see ebg you should know what are the normal values for calculation the normal ph what we take is 7.40 normal pco2 what we take is uh, 40 normal bicarbs what we take is 25 and anion gap what we take normal is 10 for all calculation uh, purposes this is considered as normal now apart from this uh, certain formulas you need to remember for if there is metabolic acidosis you need to calculate compensation that is expected pco2 this easy formula for this is 15 plus bicarb plus or minus 3 just remember for all the things which i'm telling you plus or minus 3 is a um, additional factor which you need to remember so for expected pco2 the um, formula is 15 plus bicarb this uh, this is an simplified formula there is a complicated winters formula which states that uh, expected pco2 is equal to 1.5 multiplied by bicarb plus 8 plus or minus 2 this is winter's formula it is very complicated to calculate uh, the easier way to calculate expected pco2 is 15 plus bica okay for metabolic alkalosis what you need to remember is that for um, for every increase in uh, every 10 increase in bica every 10 increase in bica piece uh, pco2 increase this is by 7 for every 10 increase in bicarb pco2 increases by 7 so this this formula you need to remember okay for metabolic now for respiratory disorders you need to remember some rule that is uh, 1425 rule that is you have to write this like this bicarb so 2 1 4 2 5 10 here okay first is acidosis second is alkalosis okay now put arrows like this it is acute chronic again acute chronic 
so in acidosis for every 10 rise in bica uh, 10 rise in carbon dioxide bicarb rises by 1 for every um, in uh, uh, chronic for every 10 rise in pco2 bicarb rises by 4 okay for uh, alkalosis for every 10 reduction for every 10 reduction bicarb reduces by 2 for uh, chronic every 10 reduction bicarb reduces by 5 so this if you remember this um, then most of the compensation formulas are co completed here otherwise com there are complicated compensation formulas and then apart from this what you need to do is that whenever you get ebg you you should not comment on the diagnosis only based on pco2 um, pH and um, bicarbs. Always you need to calculate anion gap. Once you calculate anion gap, you need to calculate something called as um, delta ratio. Delta ratio is equal to delta anion gap divided by delta bicarb. That is change in anion gap divided by change in bicarb. So what is the formula? Final formula is anion gap minus 10 divided by 25 minus bicarb. So this is delta ratio. Okay, this is calculated only when an anion gap uh, is elevated or there is presence of metabolic acidosis. Okay, once you calculate delta gap, if the value is less than four, then it indicates it is normal an anion gap metabolic acidosis. If the value is 0.4 to 1, it indicates that it is mixed, that is uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Plus normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is 1 to 2, it indicates it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is more than 2, it indicates there is metabolic acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis. Okay. So, delta ratio is calculated when there is presence of metabolic acidosis. So, you calculate it. If it is less than 0.4, it indicates normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is 0.4 to 1, it indicates uh, mixed uh, disorder that is high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus normal anion gap metabolic acid acidosis 1 to 2 it is uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis more than 2 it indicates that is non metabolic acidosis with metabolic alkalosis now but uh, so now how to approach an uh, abg <coughs> sorry so what you do is that there is some, some formula called as Rome formula. Okay, this is using pH and pCO2. That is, when pH decreases, if pCO2 increases, that is, respiratory is opposite. Okay, you, you can see the direction. If pH is low that is is going in the opposite pH and pCO2 are going in opposite direction it indicates respiratory disorder if pH and uh, pCO2 are going in same direction it is metabolic is same direction so they are going in same direction metabolic is going in same direction okay so this is Rome formula so whenever you see a Mm, EBG where pH and pCO2 are going in same direction the disorder is metabolic if you see pH and pCO2 are going in opposite direction then the disorder is uh, respiratory there is another rule called as rule of 50 here again pH and pCO2 uh, are uh, taken together okay so for this I'll give you an example like pH is 7.30 and PCO2 is 25. The difference between the last two digit of pH and bicarb is less than uh, in PCO2 is less than 15 means the disorder is metabolic. If the disorder is uh, if the difference is more than 15 then the disorder is respiratory. 
as a rule uh, both this home rule as well as rule of 15 are to be applied simultaneously they should not be applied separately at any time okay so apart uh, so once uh, this is done uh, let us take some examples pH is 7.3 carbon dioxide is 38 and bicarb is 60 now if you can see in this case pH is going down 7.4 is normal it is 7.3 here if you see pCO2 it is 40 is normal it is also going down okay so these both are in same direction so the disorder is metabolic okay now we need to decide whether it is metabolic acidosis or metabolic al alkalosis. If you see bicarb, bicarb is 16. Normal bicarb what we considered was 25. So bicarb is going down. If bicarb reduces the disorder, what we said is that this acidosis. Okay, so a primary disorder which we got is metabolic acidosis. Now we, um, we need to know whether the compensation is complete or not. So we have to calculate expected pco2 expected pco2 what i said is bicarb plus 15 so 16 plus 15 is equal to 31 so it is uh, compensation is not um, compensation if you see is not complete so compensation if compensation is com mm, complete then th this 38 would have reduced to 31 so there is some additional uh, additional component additional component is respiratory acidosis because which is keep respiratory if the because of respiratory acidosis the no, my, uh, pco2 is not coming down up to 31 it should uh, for this uh, bicarb and this ph the pco2 should have been 31 however because of the additional disorder that is respiratory acidosis which is increasing the pco2 to 38 so our complete diagnosis would be metabolic acidosis with respiratory acidosis that is there are two disorders in one patient only okay so one more example let's take is ph is 7.39 pco2 is 24 bicarb is 40 now what is happening to ph ph has reduced ph is reduced like uh, what happened to carbon dioxide it has also reduced so both are going in same direction so again the disorder is metabolic what is happening to um, bike um, bicarb is bike uh, bicarb are also re reducing so the disorder again becomes acidosis so metabolic acidosis so again i'm calculating pco2 14 plus 15 is equal to 9 sorry 29 so expected pco2 what i said was 29 so but the pco2 has reduced to more uh, 24 so pco2 should have been 29 but it is less than 29 that means uh, there is something else apart from metabolic acidosis so if pco2 reduces the disorder is respiratory alkalosis you have to remember one important point is that body never overcompensates so if if there was complete compensation pco2 would have been uh, 29 it is reduced not because of overcompensation it is because of one additional disorder that is respiratory alkalosis so our disease is metabolic acidosis plus respiratory alkalosis now let us take another example where ph is 7.42 co2 is 40 bica is 25 and we are given anion gap of 20 or it is calculated from electrolyte where we got anion gap so you see ph is nearly normal okay bicarb 
it is normal this co2 is normal but the anion gap is increased so it is high anion gap metabolic acidosis if anion gap is increased it means there is metabolic acidosis and it is high anion gap so but why if there was high anion gap metabolic acidosis p c um, bicarb should have been reduced and ph should have been towards the acidic side however it is on the alkaline side that means that there is some other disorder which is operating so what we said is that whenever you get um, high anion uh, high anion uh, metabolic acidosis that is increased anion gap or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis you need to calculate is that delta ratio so when you calculate delta ratio delta anion gap divided by delta bicarb so delta anion gap in this would be 25 20 minus 10 and bicarbs are 20, 25 minus 25 so del delta ratio what we are get getting is a infinite delta ratio with which we are getting infinite that means it is more than 2 so once it is more than 2 it means there is uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis so there are two disorders which are operating together so uh, let us take another example Here pH is 7.42 PCO2 is 67, bicarb is 42. Okay, so apart from this, no other data is um, provided to us. So, if you see here, what is happening to pH? pH is almost normal or maybe slightly increased. If you see PCO2, um, it is increased, bicarb, it is increased. Now, what we said is that if pH and PCO2 are going in same direction, the disorder primarily is metabolic okay now look at bicarb if it is metabolic we have to first thing we have to see is that bicarbs now if you see bicarb bicarbs have increased so bicarb increases metabolic alkalosis now we need to know why the ph is near normal even though bicarbs are increased by so much so that should be another disorder so in this case you need to calculate expected co2 so expected co2 how you calculate in metabolic alkalosis is that for every 10 rise in bicarb um, co2 rises by 7 so here bicarb has risen by almost 17 so it should uh, co2 should rise by almost by 7 plus 5 almost by 12 12 so expected co2 should be 40 plus almost 12 so it should be 52 however expected co2 is higher it is higher by another 15 so there is another disorder which is increasing the pco2 above the expected co2 so um, increase in pco2 is um, causes what disorder is acidosis that is respiratory acidosis so the complete diagnosis is metabolic alkalosis plus respiratory acidosis okay so these are few examples which i took uh, to calculate disorders these examples are actually given in harrison and there are some four five examples which are given which are unsolved okay uh, let us take one more last example of here take pH 7.2 PCO2 25 bicarb is 10 so pH has reduced by PCO2 has, both are in same direction so the disorder is metabolic bicarb has reduced so bicarb is also going down direction so acidosis is the primary disorder now anion gap is uh, not provided uh, not provided to us so we cannot further um, diagnose anything about metabolic acidosis however about um, expected about compensation we can 
I'll give it using expected PCO2 which is bicarb that is 10 plus 15 so it is 25 so it is um, expected PCO2 is equal to patient's PCO2 so it is with compensation metabolic acidosis with compensation so always compensation for metabolic disorder is respiratory and for respiratory disorder is metabolic uh, so when you see all this uh, all the calculations in uh, ABG one thing you need to uh, know is that step one is to see direction of pH and pCO2 same direction is, is metabolic opposite is respiratory so you need to decide about the disorder and step 2 is you, you have to decide whether it is acidosis or alkalosis so once uh, once it is a metabolic disorder you look at um, bicarb if it is respiratory disorder you look at pco2 if bicarb if you see bicarb bicarb reducing it is acidosis bicarb increasing it is alkalosis similarly for pco2 if pco2 increases it is acidosis if it is reduces it is alkalosis so once you do this the third step is calculate compensation once if any of this uh, first three steps are useless because all three are normal then you look for an and gap if ph pco2 and bicarb are normal see an and gap if an and gap present then calculate delta ratio based on delta ratio you can give uh, multiple diagnosis that is delta ratio of less than 0.4 then normal NN gap metabolic acidosis 0.4 to 1 you can give mixed that is normal and high NN gap metabolic acidosis 1 to 2 then only have NN gap metabolic acidosis and if it is more than 2 then it indicates mixed disorder that is high and end gap metabolic acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis okay so this uh, with this you can diagnose most of the disorder uh, few important points you need to remember is that respiratory acidosis and alkalosis cannot occur together okay so this is one important point other important point is that metabolic acidosis plus alkalosis plus any one respiratory disorder that always remember to calculate an and gap ask for electrolytes with blood gas together okay so these are the three important things which you need to remember Good thing which is not very important however it is better to remember is that if ABG is not correlating with 
the patient's condition. Then you look for error in APJ. So how to know there is error is by using Henderson's equation where H plus ion is equal to 24 into PCO2 divided by bicarb. So based on this you can calculate the H plus ion. Based on H plus you can remember um, the uh, calculate the uh, you can calculate pH. So you uh, just remember these numbers 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 and here from here you have to start 7.2, 7 7.3, 7 7.4, 7.5, 7 7.6. So by this formula using uh, if you think there is error in ABG that is if the ABG is not correlating with the patient just calculate the H plus ion. If suppose if you get H plus ion of 7, uh, 20 by this formula and the pH in the APG should be 7.6. If it is not 7.6 or it is less than 7.6 or greater than 7.6, that means there is error error in the APG. So you need to repeat the APG. The er error could be because of machine error. Okay. So based on this, the entire um, if you calculate this, the most uh, most of the disorders, most of the common disorders, um, you can diagnose. Okay, so in this video we learned about uh, causes of all the types of um, metabolic as well as respiratory disorders then how to differentiate between metabolic uh, acidosis that is normal anion gap and high anion gap metabolic acidosis then how, uh, how to calculate compensation and how to calculate delta ratio then how to approach it.